Well, hello, and welcome back to another one of these videos. You may have noticed by the title, but this is actually the fourth in our series reading Freren Beyond Journey's End. Um, and holy fucking Christ, is this book emotionally damaging. So obviously we start where we left off at the end of book three. And at the end of book three, we were in the process of trying to recruit a cleric basically for the party a healer, that kind of thing, a priest, if you may, right? And we recruit the healer in this book. Spoilers, obviously, for Freren, book four. It's so fucking good. But we recruit the healer. They continue on their journey. The healer is going to go find his friend, Gorilla Warrior, who left ten years ago and promised to come back in, like, three years and did not do that. Anyway, so we're questing for Gorilla Warrior, and they're still on the way to the Magic City to take the exam to be able to enter the Northern Territories so that they can go to the Demon Castle in the end. So as they're traveling, we come across one of Freren's old friends, a dwarf that's really, really old that she remembers visiting when she came with Himmel the Hero, um, who also has this kind of thing going where they like want to keep a memory of this person in their lives that they consider really special. For the dwarf, old man Vol, it's his wife. For Freren, it's Himmel, and she makes a couple funny jokes about that. Um, we also have a little interlude with like a story about um, a ring that uh, Himmel got her for, for one of the things. And it's so fucking cute because there's this whole thing with Fern and 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 the uh, the warrior, and they get her gets her a bracelet for her birthday, and it's got this little star on it that means like eternal love or to my beloved. And he's like, I didn't know it meant that. And she was like, How dare you? Um, and then Fern, like you see the memory, you see a lot of Fern's memories of like her original party, which is kind of fun because it feels like we're getting two heroes' journeys at the same time. But like with the this is the same thing where like she absolutely didn't know what it meant, but like him will definitely knew. That man had such a look when he gave it to her. He fucking knew that he was giving her a ring that meant like, my beloved. And Fern just absolutely did not notice. And like, honestly, I'm kind of getting the feeling that like, Himmel was low-key in love with like, fucking Freren. Like, low-key. Seriously. Um, so they keep journeying and... So at the end of this volume, they do actually reach the city where they're going to be taking the magic exam in. Um, there's another little interlude with um, trying to find Gorilla Warrior where they stop in another town um, and they save it from a curse, the priest does, and then, and then they stop in a town to try to find Gorilla Warrior and they do the bidding of this old lady who has them like clean this statue of previous heroes and it turns out like Freren knows one of them, it's like her elven buddy that we like met in the last book, like briefly or something. Which is really fucking funny. Um, and so they find this statue and they're like, nobody knows the names of these heroes. It's been so long. But Freren knows because she's old as fucking balls. This girl is so fucking old and I love it. Um, but basically they say that Gorilla Warrior has gone like a different way. Um, than the way they're going. And so Stein, the priest, actually breaks away with them after like a winter spent together and a little bit of traveling. And Fern's just like, he's an adult. He just needed someone to encourage him to go. Unlike, um, unlike Fern and the warrior, who I can never remember the name of because fuck that shit. <laughs> um, apparently his name's unimportant in my mind. But um, the two of them who are like children and like Fern remembers them when like Fern was a kid because she was traveling with them, which is really super cute. And this, this book just contains a lot of like smaller funny stories that I'm really enjoying and I'm really looking forward to the magic exams since they kind of introduced them at the very end of the book. So that's kind of the basic synopsis of this book. I definitely got some stuff out of order because so many different things happen in this book, like bit by bit. So with that being said, you wanna... Hey guys. Oh, that was like a negative two compared to the first one from the first video. Didn't exactly have a lot of room to work with and this chair's just yeah. not as slippery. Yeah. Had to go for more of the spinning. Yeah. <laughs> so, how did you feel about Fur and Four? 
I mean, it was pretty good, actually. I really liked it. I suppose, you know what's you know what's really kind of telling about how many different stories there are in this book alone? There are so many chapters. This book alone has ten chapters in it. There are ten different storylines happening in this one little book. But they're all so good. They're all small little vignettes of their, uh, their travels. I kind of like that Stein didn't stick around with them. Yeah, although I was getting a kick out of the I'm into older women, Fern. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking hilarious. This old ass lolly looking bitch. Just being like. <sighs> and the other two like, oh my god, that's so scandalous. A blown kiss. <gasps> Guard thy nethers. <laughs> <laughs> Gird thy loins. <laughs> the there panty a, dropper has to come. There was a plot point that I think you missed. Wasn't there like a dance or something in there? That's the one I was trying to remember. Okay, because it had to do mostly with the warrior whose name I keep fucking forgetting as I try to fucking remember it. Um, Stark. Okay. So the warrior's name is Stark. There's this point where um, this noble sees him on the road and the noble's like, oh, you could do well. Come to my estate. And so they go to the estate and the noble's like, well, I need you to pose as my son in two months for this uh, ball thing so that none of the other noble families think that my son is dead, right? We can assure them that he's still alive even though he's died in a demon campaign. Um, and at first they're like, no, we're not going to do this. And then they realize they're broke and they need money and he's going to give them a lot of fucking money to do this. So they're like, yeah, okay, we can do that. Um, and they stay there for, like, three months, right? Um, and he has to learn, like, all the noble etiquette and stuff. And then there's this beautiful dance at the end, which is actually, there's a, so there's a bigger version of this uh, drawing in grayscale inside the book as the chapter image, but I really, really like that they put it on the back because it's a really beautiful piece of art about the series. Um, and there's, like, a moment in there where Stark's, like, Aren't you? Don't you feel cold doing this when your son's not even like two months dead? And he's like, "Yeah, I fucking do." But my son wanted it, so <laughs> what you gonna do about it? Then there was another arc that, or another at least chapter in their story that you might have missed. Um, when they go and see Ferran's old person buddy, Vor. I Vol. Oh, I, did I you get that? that? That the old dwarf. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Vol, the old, old, old buddy, old man Vol. That was my favorite story. Old man Vol was great because they're like. This man's been, this dwarf has been protecting this village for 400 years. How long does this dwarf live? 300. <laughs> <laughs> and for, like, they walk up and it's like, and he's, he's like, like acting like some, uh, He's senile. He's acting senile like senile. Man. And Ferran's just like, drop the fucking act, dumbass. And then he drops it. Yeah, and then he drops Stark, like fucking whacks Stark's legs out from under him. <laughs> and then Ferran's like, you should learn from him while we're here. And just spends the entire time gossiping and she's with like, him. You know, we'll spend. I, I think I'll spend a little time here. Something like six years. And everyone's like, ten. no. She says ten, ten years. years. She's like, I want to like, spend ten years here. And they're like, a week. She's like, maybe ten years. A week. Okay. And then like she goes to like, was it the inn or something? Like, I need to stay for. I'm staying for ten years. Got a any week. jobs for me? And they're like, a week. Yeah. <laughs> Was like her time scale is so different, mm -hmm. but then it's really interesting because when she's trying to pers persuade Sane to go on the journey. Mm -hmm. She's like, it's been 10 years, um, you need to go, or you're never gonna, or you're always gonna regret that you didn't do it while you could, right? And I, I wonder if that's maybe a callback to the fact that, Fre that like, Ferran really, I think, really regrets not visiting Himmel mm -hmm. more when, when he was alive, that given the fact that she only really visited him maybe once or twice after the quest ended before he died. That said, when dealing with Vol, you have to wonder if Farron was serious and her times goes that bad, or if she's just fucking with them. Because with Farron, it feels like it could go either way at this point. Right? Like, oh, Farron is bad at time. Like, so fucking bad. So bad that she, like, knows this, like, adventurer whose name is, like, not even recorded on this monument that's literally so old that well, nobody knows who it it's is. It's interesting they've done it, because then he turns up and appears in, like, a chapter or two later. Well, they, well they, I think she, she met with him. Like two volumes ago, or she a might have been ago. a couple volumes. In ago. two or three, she met with him, or at least in a memory, we saw yeah. like a flashback. But he to like her comes back him. fully in a yeah, like, like at the very end. He, he like we're gonna see him again soon because he's like, I wonder what Ferran would think, and then he runs into the same person that we see at the end with the yeah. exams. My favorite part is the ex one of my favorite parts is the exam proc. Is like, man, I was like, Fern here is a one of the best mages we've had, and then they look at Fern. What the fuck? 
Yeah, like, Fern's so good. What's with this little lolly-looking bitch over here <laughs> who has no credentials, but this weird pendant thing that, like, half no, half the people haven't heard of? And Fern is just like, it's so annoying to have to register with all the new guilds that pop <laughs> up and die <laughs> as your life goes on. Like, I just don't bother. She's, like, <laughs> giving up giving a shit. Like, what the fuck, Fern? It's literally... I need, like... Is Fern, is Fern her traveling companion? Like Fern. Her? Fern's the girl, Fern's yeah. the elf. I need Fern to, like, pass with flying colors and Fern to be failed miserably. Right? Like, yes. Because they even kind of say, like, Fern even kind of says that it's not necessarily about how strong you yeah, are. Yeah, because she, because Fern says in this book, she says, in my lifetime, I've been beaten 11 times by people who have been, by magical power, weaker than me. Mm-hmm. She says, uh, four of them were demons, one of them was an elf, um... Uh, and the other six were humans, right? So 11 times in her life she has been defeated in battle by people who were weaker than her. It's sort of illuminating that it's supposed to be uh, the magic here is all about more who's smarter at using it as opposed to who's better at it. Yeah, do you know what you're doing? Do you know how what you're doing can work together? That sort of thing. As opposed to just, you know, big blow-up spell Explosion. That was the reference I was making. That bullshit. I fucking hate that shit so much. <laughs> I fucking hate that shit so much. Darkness is the only valid part of that anime. And the Dulahan. We love the Dulahan. I like, uh, I like Megumin. Fuck Megumin. Fuck I mean, don't Megumin. fuck her. She's a minor, Seki. That's horrible. Go to hell, Megumin. <laughs> Go to hell, Megumin. Controversial opinion. I don't like Megumin. But the hellfire burns deep within her soul. <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. That is the furthest thing from hellfire that you could possibly get. It's like the annoying orange as an anime girl. Oh. Where did this vitriol for Megumin come from? I hate Megumin so You haven't watched the anime so in a year. Much. And a half. I, I know. And you didn't have this vitriol I in the know. last discussion. I know. The fuck happened? <laughs> Evolution. <laughs> My own character development has come through finally. I hate it. I hate her so much. I have no <laughs> idea where the fuck that came from. I hate her so much. You see one too many Megumin uh, any Twitter posters? <laughs> Those Megumin Mo- profile pick brigades get you? Moving on from my correct opinions about Megumin. I'm not even saying you're incorrect. <laughs> I know plenty of respectable people who have the wrong opinion. I'm just saying, the fuck did this come from? Look, ab- absence makes the heart grow fonder. That is not what happened here. It like, that's a, not even the right usage of the term. No, no, it's exactly what happened. Absence would have made my heart grow fonder. There was no absence. It did not grow fonder. There was a lot of absence, actually. There was absolutely no absence. The fuck were you rewatching season one that many I times? I was rewatching nothing. You can't go shit without seeing Megaman content. So it is the Annie Twitter posters. <laughs> and the fact that we have a confirmed anime or movie for her. And people have gone absolutely batshit wild over the inferior waifu. My friend, you need to not be so damn petty. (laughs) I could be as petty as I fucking want to (laughs) be. So, moving forward. (laughs) Darkness got like an entire half a season dedicated to her. I know, she's stunning. Wait, was that season two? Yes. I haven't seen season two yet, bitch. I know you haven't. Maybe I have to watch season two. Darkness is best. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe the fact that you're one of the, the, uh, that one character that you that wasn't your immediate wife who got a movie wouldn't sting so bad if your wife who got half a season. <laughs> Anyways, um, one of the things I really like about books three and four, right? That's more evident now than we were seeing in books one and two, and I hope it continues to be as evident going forward. Is we're getting more and more flashbacks to Freren and Himmel and her original party. Like, I'm actually really enjoying those because it's a nice perspective shift, like, seeing, like, 
how she was like back then, you know, and, and what she did with her party. And then seeing that reflected in how she's treating like her new friends and how she's kind of trying to change or is changing going forward. Going forward. You know what I mean? Like, I'm actually really enjoying that. It, it's very heartwarming. Also, this book has a lot of moments where I was just like, that's psychological damage, or that's emotional damage. Like, I was reading this earlier, and I kept, like, outright giggling. There's literally a moment where it's like, by the way, what are you trying to find on your journey? Heaven? Is that somewhere you need to try to reach? All you need to do is die to get there. Even you could go there, Master Sane. <laughs> like, even you, Mr. Perverted Priest San. <laughs> Like, what the fucking hell? There's just tons of lines like that throughout this fucking book, and I love them all. Or the moment when she gets sane to, like, couples council, the fucking Fern and Stark, <laughs> and Sane's just like, they need to get together! <laughs> and Fern's like, I don't know what you mean, but you're doing great, Master Sane. And the fact that she's just like, my form of praise is like, good boy, Master Sane. <laughs> No, but it's true. That's what she does. She's like, good boy. Because <laughs> he's a child to her. But it's so weird because Fern's the one who looks like, or Freren's the one who looks like a child. But like, absolutely everyone is an infant in comparison to her. So I'm very much liking this. Like, I like what's going on in this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a pleasant series to read. Yeah. I'm very much enjoying it. Uh, Gert was right when he read it. You know, we were on top of the ball first. We, read, we mentioned Gar and what would have been a video in a month ago in our <laughs> Farron 3 talk. We can't mention him every video just because he made a video recent for us. I know, I know. But still, you know, like, go read it. It's really fucking good. I really hope this gets an anime. It will eventually. Yeah. Like, it seems popular enough. It just needs to hit. I think it needs a more conclusive, like, end point for an anime before we see one announced. Right, whereas right now, I don't think there's any real point where you can say, oh, this is our season finale here. Maybe that last... Uh, I the suppose... Demon, the de when they were in that demon uh, invaded yeah, village. Yeah, the, the demon village, and then maybe since the demon village, at the end of the mage exams. Maybe when that, that could ends. work too, yeah. Yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. Um, although book five should be out either soon or in a week or two, and I will be getting it, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... So let us know if you like knickknacks slide in. Nah, after this one's pretty I... weak. Don't let us know. Wait till we have a stronger <laughs> yeah. one. After I uh, recap the book or that kind of thing, like, do you like our off the shelves? That sort also, of thing? This, our set, our set, or like our setup here might change. We might not be able to do a slide in in the future. That's true. We might not be able to. Only time will tell. Yeah. So uh, like, comment, subscribe. Mm -hmm.